Hey folks, I asked yesterday whether you'd be interested in learning a little bit more about how DevTools work. And some of you said yes, so let's do this. We're going to spend a bit of time learning about how developer tools work in browsers. Um, and yeah, let's jump right in. Now, one thing I want to note is that this is going to be a very high level introduction to the high level architecture. And it's at that level not going to make a difference whether you use Safari or Edge or Chrome or Firefox. They all pretty much rely on the same type of architecture, uh, which we'll dive in right now. I've made a very simple diagram and we'll go over each of those boxes and arrows. But at a high level, uh, you can see the browser engine box here at the top. Um, what this does is it knows how to handle HTML, CSS, JavaScript, images, and so on to display a web page on the screen, right? Uh, now we've got two other boxes, a DevTools server and a DevTools client. Um, and the reason that we have that is even though DevTools here, I've got it open on my website, even though it is very close to the website, it's like in the same browser window, uh, essentially, and even though we could think that maybe the DevTools code here could reach into the web page directly to get information from it, it's not actually how this works. And the reason for this is that DevTools, the same app here, which I can un undock, for example, this UI here is able not only to debug that web page, but also an app on my phone or a service worker or actually a node application as well. Uh, if you start node from the command line with a specific parameter, you can use this edge inspect special page to connect to it uh, here. If you've got another machine running in a different room here connected to the same network and it has an IP address and a port, you could also debug that remotely from DevTools. And so that's why there is a notion of a client and a server. Those two things are separate. It doesn't have to be in the same browser. Um, now, if we go back to the quick diagram, why do we have a browser engine separate from the DevTools server? Why aren't these things the same thing? Um, well, in reality, they sort of are. Like the um, boundary between the two is a little bit blurred, but they're really quite separate. Uh, still, the thing is the browser engine is very, very optimized. It needs to render content on the screen as fast as it can, do network request, parse JavaScript, uh, run it, you know, interpret CSS rules and properties and draw the right things on the screen as fast as it can. It shouldn't have to deal with, is DevTools open? Do I need to send information to DevTools while I'm doing this? Um, the architecture is such that the browser engine is separate, standalone, it does its own thing very, very fast and performant, and the DevTools server is separate from that. It knows, the server knows how to get information from it. It knows the APIs that are open to get a DOM tree, for example, or set a breakpoint, but those things are still separated. Um, in a way, the browser engine is a debugging target. We could abstract it to its most um, generic form from the point of view of the DevTools server. It is just a target that I can debug the same way as I can debug a Node.js process or something else. So that's why we have those three boxes in the diagram. Now let's focus a little bit on the arrow between the client and the server here. Um, there is something going on here I, we already said that the client and the server were separated and that actually the client could be running on a completely different physical machine from the server. They could be on two separate machines. So there needs to be a transport layer here. Uh, physically, what's happening here is a WebSocket is used, um, at least in the Chromium world. Um, and that's great because that means a two-way communication can happen. Now. Uh, the client and the server don't talk freely. They have to go through some kind of interface to understand each other. And that's where the DevTools protocol comes in. Each browser sort of has its own little different protocol here, unfortunately. Firefox has a Firefox DevTools protocol that has its own list of commands and things that the client can ask the server and 
and etc. Edge uh, used to have its very own protocol as well back when they didn't use the Chromium browser engine. Now they do, so it's the same as the Chrome one, um, same as in Brave. Uh, Safari is a little bit different. Safari and Chrome used to use the same browser engine at the beginning and at some point they forked. So they have a lot of similarities, but they're still uh, a little bit different. So this protocol, uh, what it is, is that it's a it's an interface. It defines the list of things that can be transferred between the client and the server. Now, the client can request a certain number of things that are defined in the protocol, and the server will implement the interface to actually do the work and return the right information. Something like Visual Studio Code, which is not a DevTools client, can become a DevTools client. It, it just has to use this protocol interface and talk to whatever server it needs. And in that case, VS Code is able to debug JavaScript code directly in Chrome or Edge using this DevTools uh, protocol. Um, test automation libraries, if we look at Puppeteer, which you might be using to automate um, testing in your web app, or Playwright is another example. They both use Chrome DevTools protocol behind the scenes to navigate to a page. Here is a code example from Playwright. It navigates to a page and it gets an element from the DOM and then it checks the text of that element. Using the Chrome DevTools protocol, you can do all of these things very easily. The Chrome DevTools protocol actually is documented. Um, you can go to this page and you can see all of the things that a DevTools client could do. For example, if you go to the overlay domain, uh, you see things like set inspect mode. If you call that command and a DevTools server is started on the other end of the, of the tunnel, then you would be able to start the inspect mode, which allows you to select elements from the page. That's what this DevTools client does when you click on that button here. Let's see. Now, one thing that's really cool about um, the DevTools client here is, let me actually pop it back in to the window, is something called a protocol monitor. If you want to learn more about it, um, it's a great way to see what's happening. You have to enable it, go to settings and then experiments. You can type in protocol and you'll find the setting here. I've already enabled it. But once you, um, once you have DevTools open, you can open the protocol monitor. And there we have it. So for now, it doesn't show anything. But look as I start doing things in DevTools. Let's say I want to hover over nodes here or stop the inspect mode and find things in the page. You can see so many things are happening here. What this tool is doing is it's showing the network traffic, uh, sorry, the protocol traffic. So I can click on any one of those uh, requests or responses and see what has been going on the wire. In this case, uh, something called CSS.getMatched styles was sent as a request with a node ID, and then a response came back with some information about it. So it's a great way to play with the API. If you want to learn more about the Chrome DevTools protocol, you can use DevTools actually to start the protocol monitor, do things, and then you'll see all of the requests going, going through. And you can also filter, um, filter these things. Now, we can do a little bit of a test here. Um, if I go to, for example, this website, this MDN WebSocket website, and I open DevTools here. And I know that there is some changes that happen in the page when I click on that arrow. So let's see, let's select the element and click on the arrow mm, right here. You see how the class on that UL element is changing? Um, we can use the protocol monitor tool to see what's happening here. So if I empty, I've emptied the, um, the protocol monitor now and I'm gonna click on that button, 
And now we can see those two things, those two packets uh, came in. One is saying that they're both saying that an attribute was modified, and one is saying that the class was modified, and the other one, the aria expanded um, attribute was modified. Let me make that a little bit bigger. So that's how the DevTools server, without the client needing to say anything, sent a couple of information packets to the client for that feature to work, for the highlighting of the DOM node changes to uh, to happen. Um, but how does the DevTools server know that the change even happened in the DOM, right? The DevTools server, again, is a little bit separate from the browser engine. It is not the browser engine. It's Those are two separate things. So there needs to be code in the server that listens for changes in the browser engine. Um, and this happens um, with in Chromium with C++ code. Um, we can go and take a look at it. Actually, this is super interesting. Chromium is an open source project and the entire code is available um, on this website, this Chromium code search website, which allows you to go through the entire code base and search for stuff. We look in here at a C++ file that is part of the implementation of the Chromium DevTools server. This C++ code, um, this is one of the methods. It's called set show grid overlays, which happens to be the implementation of one of the CDP Chrome DevTools protocol methods. Um, and we're not going to look into the details here. There are many other files that are involved, but essentially it gets the information and then it goes into the Blink rendering engine, which it's actually part of in that case, and it goes and finds layout information and CSS information and whatnot. Firefox also has a very cool search engine for its source code, searchfox.org. Uh, the difference between Firefox and Chromium in here is that Firefox uses a ton of JavaScript code for the browser itself, including the DevTools server. The DevTools server that's part of Firefox is written in JavaScript. Um, and we can see one of the examples here, get author CSS text, which is part of a of a JavaScript class here, um, style rule actor. This method probably gets the CSS text for a rule, as it says, and it's all in JavaScript. So um, quite cool to you know take a look at and see if you can find anything. Um, now let's look at the last box, which we haven't really talked about, the DevTools client here. Um, I find this part the most interesting, but also the simplest to explain, because uh, if you're a web developer, DevTools client is a web page. It is just a website. It Okay, it may be quite complicated and really big, and it does a lot of stuff, but it is just a website. Um, in fact, I will try to prove this to you. That's not the right window. There we go. Um, if I open these DevTools uh, in a separate window, I just said that this is just a web page. If this is a web page, then that means it must be running inside a browser engine, right? There must be a browser engine instance that drew these things on the page based on HTML, CSS, and images, and JavaScript. And if there is a browser engine, that did that, then that means it's a debugging target that another DevTools client can debug. Um, so I have this DevTools window open and I, I'm going to press Control shift i which is the uh, keyboard shortcut to open DevTools in Chrome and Edge, and we have another instance of DevTools that debugs the first one. Right? You can see that as I move my mouse, things get highlighted, I can change color of stuff, um, let me pick that section element. It's an HTML tag name, color red. Oops, red, red. There we go, this section is now red. Um, let's go further, inception style. Control Shift I again, 
I have an instance of DevTools that debugs DevTools, that debugs DevTools, and so on and so on. You get the point. You can do this um, pretty much forever. I think my computer is getting a little bit slow now, and so I'm going to probably close this one. But yeah, that's what's happening. The DevTools UI or client, it is just a web page. Let me close those things. One thing that I'd like to show you as well in that same idea is back in Firefox now, the pretty much the entire Firefox UI is also using web technologies such as HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And we can show that as well. Um, if you go to DevTools and you go to the settings, you have to enable the last two checkboxes at the bottom. Enable Browser Chrome um, and enable remote debugging. And once you've done that, you can go to the main menu, then select more tools and browser toolbox and see what happens. We have a new DevTools. There's a message here, you need to okay that. At first sight, it's a normal DevTools, but as you start doing things, you realize that, hey, it's debugging the entire browser window now. Isn't that cool? You can select, for example, this tab element and maybe, let's see, maybe give it some background color and make it taller. And I can customize the whole area, the whole surface area of the browser here this way using DevTools. So again, the browser UI here is using web technologies. So there is a browser engine that rendered this content. And because of this fact, then you can plug DevTools to it to debug it. So that's really cool. Um, but yeah, I think we've, uh, we've done it. We've looked at all of those three boxes on the screen. Uh, and I hope this was a useful introduction to the high level architecture of DevTools in browsers. Again, Pretty much the same thing across all of the browsers that you might use today. Um, and yeah, play around with it, have fun, debug DevTools with DevTools, and let me know what you think.